Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. What you're going to see us working on today is the finished welding on the I-beams we installed in the last video. And the crew from Legacy Block is going to be installing the speed floor. You're going to see them setting joists, putting the pan decking, and finishing up with the uh, reinforcing wire and, and rebar and stuff that goes in the concrete that's going to be the second floor slab. Now if you're not familiar with welding you're probably wondering why this takes so long to weld in. And the thing you need to realize is that these I-beams are wide flange 12 inch I-beams. So what that means is that there's about six feet of weld all the way around that I-beam for each pass. So there's about a total of 42 feet of weld on each end of these I-beams. Well, there's six ends, so there's over 240 feet of weld required to get these things welded in solid. When we started measuring these joists to place them inside the house, we found that there were some problems. Um, I think that since Speed Floor just opened up a new facility uh, to manufacture these joists in the United States, that there were some issues. And what we had to do is five of the joists in the garage were too short, so we had to extend the mounting shoes to get them to reach the walls in the garage. And the other joists, there were 23 of them that were too long. So the crew from Legacy Block spent about 15 minutes per joist cutting those to length, redrilling the holes, and getting the mounting shoes bolted back up to them. Uh, they spent a total of about eight hours getting this done. And I'm going to uh, show you that process, but I'm going to speed the footage up so that you don't have to sit here through them, you know, doing all of that at normal speed just bear in mind when you look at it that it's at about five times the speed that uh, is normal speed to get this done
Throughout this process, you're going to see them using a cutoff wheel and a grinder on the ends of some of these panels. And what they're doing is notching it out so that it fits around the mounting shoe for the joist that it's sitting on. And I'm going to show you a close-up of this here in a little bit, but the thing that these panels are sitting on are called lock bars. And what they do is they space these joists apart and make sure that they maintain that same spacing across the span but they also give this decking something to sit on and the decking is not structural it's leave in place form material and this system the with the the metal decking replaced what they used to use which was plywood or form ply and once the concrete's cured, you take those lock bars out, and then th this system, the decking stays in place, but previously the form ply was reused on another job. And you're gonna see and hear them hammering on this decking. And the way it works, there is one corrugation on each side of each panel that the two, sections next to each other locked together and you put it on at a bit of an angle and then hammer it down and it locks everything in place.
So this is the lock bars going into place and they are 3 8 inch steel with notches cut into the ends for different spacing. The way they work, the oval holes that you see along the edges of the joists are sized so that they stick these lock bars in and then you'll see them take a crest wrench and turn them vertically and it locks them in place in the notches in those lock bars. You'll see these lock bars spaced every two feet across this span because that's what the engineers determined was needed to support the concrete during the curing process. Finishing up putting the reinforcing in for the concrete. And these guys are about done with this part.
So this is what all this looks like on the underside. There's the stairwell that'll go upstairs. The French doors on the in the dining room, between the dining room and the kitchen. The bathroom door that comes in from the outside. That's the kitchen. That's where the island's gonna be. And then this is going into the laundry area over here, mud room, mechanical room, pantry. And then the garage. There's the door to come in from the outside on the garage, stairs that'll go upstairs or stairwell. We haven't built the stairs yet. And that's what this looks like on the inside when you pour the concrete. You end up with a six inch cylinder every 12 inches horizontally and vertically. All right, folks, I think that's going to wrap this video up for today. Thank you for watching, and uh, y'all have a good day.